Well, hello, Driver's Ed people. We are coming to you today to continue our discussion of the rules of the road book. We are inching closer and closer to you being ready to take your permit exam. And just looking at the timeline of things, uh, this week we're going to get through chapters 9, 10, and 11, and maybe even 12. We'll see. And then next week, we will finish up with chapters 12 and 13, or just 13. We'll see how far we get. And then we've got some review work to do, and we'll be ready for the, for the permit test. So we're looking at the possibility of taking the permit test at, towards the end of next week. Um, so especially you, you in-class learners, um, you know, you'll be taking it right there during class. Remote learners, I will work out arrangements with you. But uh, plan on coming into the school. We're going to set things up in the library and uh, make sure that we can have you very socially distanced um, so that, that you've got lots of room to spread out and, um, and, and come in and, and take that test uh, at the school. So uh, I'll give you more details on that as we get closer to it. I'll, I'll have... Um, I'll have it all outlined by the end of this week, uh, exactly what we're going to do for that. Uh, but plan on towards the end of next week. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into our lecture for today. Now, today we're going to do things a little differently. Um, this chapter is such a visual chapter to begin with that it just doesn't make sense to try to transfer everything over into a Google Slides. So rather than doing that, what I'm going to do is just kind of scroll through the rules of the road book with you and talk about these various roadway signs. There are a lot of signs here in this book. Let's see, where can I squeeze myself in here? There we go. There are a lot of uh, signs in the book. We aren't going to try to memorize every single one because... The, the pictures on the signs tell you a lot, but there are certain things that we just absolutely have to know. So we're going to go through those things that you've just got to know. And then I'll also point out to you some common mistakes that people make, signs that, they, that get confusing and, and people will mess them up on the permit test. So that's what we're going to cover, the essential things that you've got to know. And what are some of those signs that are confusing? Um, and, and then the rest of it, you can read through this chapter on your own. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see here that it says along the roadway, there are many types of signs, regulatory signs, warning and guide signs. Um, so we got three different types there, regulatory signs, warning signs, and guide signs. Now, Regulatory, let's talk about what that word means. That means that it's a rule. It's something that you have to follow, okay? So regulatory equals a rule. Warning equals just that. I mean, they're warning you about something. They're giving you a heads up. It's, you know, hey, look out because this is what's coming up, okay? That's what warning means. And then guide is just giving you information. So it might be information about what road you're on. It might be information about how many people live in a town, you know, a population sign as, as you're entering into a town. It might be a sign telling you how many miles away the next town is when you're on the highway. So those are examples of guide signs. Okay, then in addition to types of signs, each type of sign is identified by a shape and color. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, Mr. Smith, are you really going to talk to us about shapes? What is this, like kindergarten or something? I know, I know. But listen, there are a few shapes that you just absolutely have to know. And we're going to talk about why it is important um, that certain signs are certain shapes. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and talk about this. There are, these are the basic shapes of signs. So this first one here, everybody knows what this sign is, right? I mean, it's an octagon. Everyone knows that when you see that red sign, it's a stop sign. But have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about this? 
why is a stop sign an octagon? And are there any other signs that are octagons? Well, the answer to the second question is no. Not in the United States. There are not other signs that are octagons. And why is a stop sign an octagon? So that it's easily recognizable from far away before you can ever read what the letters are on it. And from the back of the sign, it's easily recognizable. Now let's flip over to this image right here. Hopefully you recognize this place. This is the student parking lot at Staunton High School. And here we are out here on Bunker Hill Road, the road that leads to the parking lot. And as we pull up to the road, uh, this intersection here, here's Deneen, you can see that we have a stop sign. But look at what else we can tell just sitting here at the intersection. We can look across the street and we can see that the across the street, they also have a stop sign. And we can tell right here that there's also a stop sign. And we also know that there's a stop sign here. Now, you can't exactly tell that from this angle, but we know that the, it is a stop sign. Um, so the one of the reasons why a stop sign is, is always an octagon, and that's the only sign that's an octagon, is so that when you are looking at an intersection and you are only seeing the back of the sign, when you can't tell what the color is and you can't tell what the words say on that sign, you know hey, they've got a stop sign just like I have. Now I can figure out whose turn it is to go because I know that they have a stop sign just like me. Okay, so the shapes of signs are actually important. Um, so so an eight-sided sign like that is an octagon. I got to figure out what's going on with my dog. He's over here whining. Hang on. He had to be let outside. All right, so let's continue then. So that's the stop sign, eight-sided Stop signs are always red, and they're always going to say stop across them. But when you see them from the back, you can't tell those things. So there you go, stop sign. The next one here is the yield sign. So it's a triangle with rounded off corners, and it always has a flat side at the top, okay? There again, it is the only sign that has that shape. And the reason is that... <clears throat> um, that same reason as the stop sign. The, the reason that we have this one sign that always has that shape is so that when you see it from the back, you can tell what it means. A yield sign means just that. You have to yield. You have to let the other person go first. All right. So when we have a yield sign, that means that you do not have the right of way and the other direction of traffic does. The third sign here is the railroad crossing. Now, the railroad crossing is the only sign where the sign itself is round, okay? You might not have known that one. I bet you already knew the octagon and the yield sign. I bet you already knew that those were the only signs that had that shape. But you probably didn't realize that the railroad sign is the only sign that where the actual sign itself is round. Now we have lots of other signs that have round shapes on a square or rectangular sign, but this is the only one where the sign itself is round. And of course, railroad signs are very important because they alert us to a railroad crossing. And we have to be very careful when we approach a railroad crossing. We've already talked about that in depth, um, but if but you know the the keys there are to slow down, to always assume that there's a train, to look both directions and and listen for a train. And if there is a train, always yield, never race a train. Okay, moving on. So now we move into a category of sign that it's not an individual sign where there's only one sign that has this shape. There are lots of signs that have this shape. So we move to the diamond sign, which is, is literally just a square that has been rotated to diamond formation. Um, now the diamond sign always means warning. It could mean warning about construction, or it could mean warning about road hazards. Uh, it'll depend on the color. If it has the color of orange, it'll be road hazards. If it has the color of yellow, it, I'm sorry, flip-flop that. If it has the color of orange, it will be construction. If it has the color yellow, it will be road hazards. Okay, coming up next, we have another of our individual signs where only one 
sign has this shape. And that is the school zone or school crossing sign. So you only see these in school zones. You only see them around school buildings and they always mean the same thing. And that thing is look out for children, look out for school age people, okay? And if there are school age people around, you need to immediately slow down to 20 miles per hour, okay? Now, if you know it's during school hours, you should already just be going 20, going 20 miles an hour anyway. But you will almost always see associated with this school crossing sign, you'll see a secondary sign that says uh, on school days when children are present. So if it's a school day and they, you can see children anywhere around, you have to abide by that school zone speed limit, which is always 20 miles per hour. The next one up is, again, is another individual sign. It's another triangle sign. It's the only sign that has this shape, and it's the no passing zone sign. And again, the reason that it's shaped like this is so that you can easily identify it from a distance, and you know ahead of time before you can even read the words, hey, that's a no passing zone I'm coming up to. And no passing zone means just that. It means you can't go around a slower car until the no passing zone ends. All right, coming up next, we've got another broad category of signs, much like the diamonds were. These are squares or rectangles, and they can either be regulatory, meaning that they tell you something that you have to follow. The easiest example of that would be a speed limit sign. You have to follow the speed limit. Or they can be guide signs, which just gives you some type of information. Um, so things like, you know, a population sign as you drive into town and it says, you know, city of Staunton, population, whatever. Okay, now those wouldn't be white like the example on the screen here. But th remember, this section here is not talking about color. The next section talks about color. This section is talking about shape. Okay, so let's get into colors. Color of a sign has a special meaning also. Red always means regulatory. Red always means regulatory. So, so that's something that you have to follow or you have to do. Black and white can be regulatory or it can be guide. So a good example, again, would be a speed limit sign. That's a black and white sign and it's regulatory. But then you also have black and white signs that might just be like a route marker telling you what highway you're on. Yellow signs. Yellow signs are warning signs and they tell a driver about road conditions and dangers ahead, like a curve coming up in the road or slippery pavement or, um, you know, a, a pedestrian crossing. OK, the book here does a really bad job of showing this yellow green color. Um, it's actually more of a fluorescent green, um, a fluorescent yellow green. This is not a good uh, representation of it. But you'll see these sometimes for school zones or playground areas or pedestrian crossings because they're supposed to be high visibility. And so they're just warning you about, you know, hey, be extra cautious here and, and make sure you're watching out for children or, or pedestrians. Uh, orange signs, these are warning signs for construction. There's some type of construction going on. Um, they're working on a roadway or working on a bridge. And then green are guide signs. They tell a, a driver uh, what direction to go or how far away something is. Blue, you see these most commonly on interstates, and they tell you about gas stations and restaurants and, and things like that. Brown is used for parks and recreation, so they might tell you where a, a museum is or a library or a state park or something along those lines. Pink, I, I've only ever seen a pink sign once, okay? And these are like the one that I saw, and I assume most of them are this way. They're these little pop-up signs that some police officers carry in their car. And when there's a, a stalled motorist or a wreck or something like that, they might pop one of these signs up to help, you know, grab people's attention and tell them to slow down. Uh, but they're used for traffic incident signing. Um, so, you know, just like it says here. All right, so let's get into some of these other signs. We've talked about stop signs and yield signs before. Let's talk about some of these others. And remember, I'm not going to go through every single one of these because a lot of them tell you exactly what to do or you can figure out exactly from the shape. But we're going to go through and we're going to talk about some of the, the key signs that people, people oftentimes get confused. 
All right, so let's scroll down here and see. Okay, speed zone ahead sign. So speed limit changing can be kind of tricky for some people. When you are going from a higher speed limit to a lower speed limit. So let's say you're in a 55 mile an hour speed limit and you're gonna drop down to 45 like it shows here. If you're gonna drop down to 45 miles an hour, then that means you have to be slowed down by the time you get to the sign that looks like this, the speed limit sign, not the speed zone ahead. That's generally where you start slowing down and then you are slowed down by the time you get to the actual speed limit sign. Now, if you're going from a lower speed limit to a higher speed limit, you can't start speeding up until you get to that higher speed limit. And that part gets kind of confusing for people, okay? So this is warning you that a speed zone is coming up. Any of these no signs just mean whatever's behind the no emblem, you're not allowed to do. So certain roads, you can't have bicycles on. Certain areas, you can't do U-turns, can't do a right turn or a left turn in certain areas. So, so that's exactly what that means. Uh, here we have a one-way sign. And of course, we, we have one of those on Deneen. Um, Deneen is a one-way street. There's also a do not enter sign on Deneen Street. If we pop back over here real quick and move over to this section, you can see right there, there's a do not enter sign on Deneen right out in front of the high school. And the reason for that is it's a one-way street. Um, and so, you know, you can't head south on Deneen. You can only travel north on Deneen. Okay, so two-way left turn lanes. We're going to talk about that in depth in the next chapter when we talk about lane markings. Um, but two-way left turn lanes can be kind of confusing. And so we'll make sure that you're all squared away on that and you understand those thoroughly. No turn on red. So usually you can turn right on a red light, but there are times where they won't let you turn right on a red light. And so uh, this is one of those situations. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Approaching a divided highway. Guys, this was, this takes me back to one of the absolute scariest moments I've ever had as a driver's ed teacher. And it happened way back when I was in college. So when I was in college, uh, uh, taking all of my various classes, I had some special classes just for being a driver's ed teacher. And one of those classes were, was that I got three students that, that I got to train to be drivers and they were all college students and you might think well wait a minute what college students wouldn't have their license I mean come on um, but two of them were exchange students from India okay and one was from inner city Chicago and she had just always taken public transportation so I had Sriram and Babita Babita was spelled B-A-B-I-T-A -A. you'll need to know that for the worksheet okay so we had Sriram and Babita from India. And then we also had Winona from inner city Chicago. And so I got to train these people how to drive. Um, they were all horrible. They were, they were really bad. Uh, Winona thought she was good, but she was only good because three room and Babita were so bad. She really wasn't that good anyway. Um, Sriram and Babita especially, like I had to show them what a gas pedal was and a brake pedal was. They didn't understand how to turn the steering wheel to make the car turn. It was an adventure. Uh, so anyway, fast forward, you know, we're a couple of weeks in and Babita's getting better and starting to get more comfortable. And so I said, all right, it's time to leave the parking lot. We got to go driving around town. So this was the SIU Edwardsville and we left campus and headed out past where the track and softball and baseball fields are at SIU Edwardsville. And we were gonna go up into town. Um, well, there's a spot there when you come out of the south side of campus where you come up to this area where you have to cross a divided highway. Remember, that's what prompted this. So we're on this little road here and we're crossing a divided highway. So a divided highway has uh, two lanes of traffic moving in one direction, two lanes of traffic moving in another direction, and a little median area in the middle. Okay, so that's where we're at here. So we pull up to this spot and Babita looks and there's nobody coming. This is campus up here, all right? So SIU's up here and here's the road. So there was nobody coming down the road and there was nobody coming from the other way either. And so Babita starts to pull out. And so here we go, we're driving out into the road and let's see if I can just go a little bit farther. I think that'll probably be pretty good. And so we get to about this location right here 
And Babita looks to the left, and here come two cars. And here come two cars. I mean, there's two cars just, you know, traveling down this road. Now, the speed limit on this road, I believe, is 45, but most of the cars are going faster than that. And so Babita, like, freezes up and stops the car right here, right where we're at. And so, you know, I'm just like looking and, you know, I look ahead, look over the side. I was like, uh, Babita, we've got to go. Now, let me give you the lay of the land in the car. This was a, a mid 90s Corsica with a full console. Um, there was no way I could reach her gas pedal. I've got a brake pedal on my side that I can hit. That doesn't do me any good right now because we're already stopped. I can grab the wheel if I need to and yank the wheel. Didn't need to do that. I can reach over and shut the car off with the key if I need to. That's not helping either. So Babita's just sitting there staring at these cars coming. And they're getting closer and closer. And so I look at her again. I say, Babita, we've got to go. Still nothing. She's just like a deer in the headlights, eyes wide. And so finally I was like, Babita, we got to go. And so she slams on the gas and we lurch forward here into the median and I slam on the brake and I stop us. <laughs> I was like, all right, Babita, get in the back. You're done for today. I'm not dying today. I'm too young for this. And uh, Winona got up and she drove the car. So uh, yeah, divided highway. That was That was my first really memorable driver's ed memory. So if you think you're going to be a bad driver, don't worry. I've already seen it. <laughs> you're going to do just fine. So that was approaching a divided highway. Um, yeah, nightmares about that one. Other signs that we need to make sure that we know. Well, let's let's take a look at that approaching a divided highway just a second. So, so now you know that situation. There's another divided highway sign. Let me scroll down here and find it. There, That's not it. That's close. Here it is right here. So <clears throat> this divided highway sign, whoop, it just went away. This divided highway sign right here means not that you're crossing a divided highway like I did with Babita that day, but instead of uh, you're not crossing a divided highway, instead you're on a divided highway and that divided highway is either ending and it's going back to an undivided highway or you're on an undivided highway and it's getting ready to split and become divided. So that's what that one there means. Now I want to show you this merging lanes and reduction in lanes, okay? So reduction in lanes means that, let's say that you're on the interstate and there are three lanes of traffic and all of a sudden one of those lanes is going to go away and there's only going to be two lanes of traffic. That would be a reduction in lanes. So one lane is literally ending and you've got to scoot over and get into one of the other lanes. That's reduction in lanes. Merging lanes is, you know, you got two lanes of traffic going down the interstate and here comes an on-ramp and it's merging with them. So they're very similar, but there is a slight difference there. Okay, both of them require traffic to kind of join together, but there is a difference. Uh, some other ones that people sometimes get confused. Let me find it here. All right, so here is a slippery pavement sign. See how we've got these uh, wiggles behind the car here. That's not a very technical term, but there you go. We got these wiggles behind the car. And then we've got this winding road sign. Okay. Those two look kind of similar, but they mean something very different. The winding road sign means literally the road itself is winding back and forth. You can expect a lot of curves. Slippery pavement means the road's not necessarily windy at all. I mean, it could be, but that's not what the sign means. What the sign means is that if that pavement gets wet because of rain or whatever, something about that pavement surface is real slippery. So you got to be extra cautious, okay? Um, so that's a slippery pavement sign. The other one's a winding road sign. The All of these here, turns and curves, they, they try to make the arrow somewhat match what the road is going to actually do. So it's giving you information about what's happening. Intersection ahead. So there are multiple different types of intersection ahead signs. So if you have a crossroad, it means just that. Your road is going to cross roads with another road. A side road means that your road continues on and there's a, a road coming up on whichever side it shows the side road. Uh, so you shouldn't pass in that situation. Never pass when there's a side road. T intersection means the road that you are on is ending. If you don't slow down and prepare to turn, you're going to go crashing off the end of this road. Okay, a T intersection means your road 
is ending. And so you've got to be aware of that. And then a Y intersection, you know, this is less common than any of the others, but they do happen out there. And so generally speaking, at a Y intersection, if you're going to be going right, you have the right of way. If you're going to be going left, you have to yield. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, the T intersection, um, follow whatever signage is there. But generally speaking, if you're on this road that's ending, that's called the terminating leg of the road, and you don't have the right of way, you're going to have to yield. So those are some signs that people oftentimes get confused. Let's scroll down here just a little bit and talk and talk about these construction uh, zones. Always obey the construction zone speed limits. Remember, those speed limits are enforced 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, you'll also sometimes see a flagger. You'll see a, a construction flagger, and they might even have one of those. Uh, slow and stop signs that rotates. So um, uh, follow along with that. There's our slow moving vehicle sign that we talked about in a previous chapter, chapter five about sharing the road. But there it is again, the orange triangle with the red bars, average speed for slow moving vehicles, five to 20 miles per hour. Um, and here's just a variety of guide signs telling you different things. Hey, shout out to my alma mater. I graduated from Taylorville High School. Um, so here are all of the, the various guide signs and just the wide variety of signs that you might see. Those letters JCT, by the way, that's kind of confusing, but it, it means junction. So you're coming up with a spot where your road either crosses or joins Illinois 47. So if you're looking for Illinois 47, hey, it's coming up at the next junction, the next spot where roads intersect. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's those are your signs right there. Like I said, um, you can read through this and look through all of these yourself. But what I wanted to do is make sure that you understand the meaning of the colors, the meaning of the shapes and all of that kind of stuff. So hope you learned something from this today. Hope you got something out of it. But even if you didn't, just like my favorite professor, Dr. Phillips used to say, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. We'll see you.